and welcome to Picture This, a podcast from the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum. My name is Jill Hartke, and I'm the digital archivist here at the museum. Today, we explore the life of the other half of the Tingley power couple that helped to shape Albuquerque and New Mexico in the 20th century. In the photo archives of the Albuquerque Museum is a photograph showing Carrie Tingley sitting in a carriage with a dog outside of San Felipe de Neri Church in Old Town Albuquerque around 1912. She might not look like a political mastermind, but looks can be deceiving. Here's the story behind the photograph. Carrie Reed Wooster was born on May 20, 1877, in Bowling Green, Ohio, the only child of a wealthy couple. Her father was a farmer, but the family was very prosperous. Carrie was raised in a farmhouse at 725 East Wooster Street, which became the Bowling Green State University President's House, and was used as such until 1937, when it became a dormitory and counseling center. The house was demolished in 1973, but Wooster Street is still a main artery through the city of Bowling Green. Carrie lived a privileged life in a prominent family, so money was not an issue, but her health was... Carrie's father died of tuberculosis, and Carrie contracted the disease. The doctors prescribed a change in climate. In 1910, Carrie and her mother boarded a westbound train. Carrie's health deteriorated on the long train ride, and the family decided to stop in Albuquerque to see a doctor. The doctor, seeing how sick Carrie was, advised them to stay in town. So they did. They found a small house on East Cromwell in the sand hills of Albuquerque, and Carrie's beau from back in Ohio, Clyde Tingley, drove her to doctor appointments as she recovered from tuberculosis. In April of 1911, Carrie and Clyde were married. Carrie had a heart for philanthropy and a mind for politics. She made both her priority. Much of her life was spent in the shadow of Clyde Tingley, although many people who knew the couple believed it was Carrie, not Clyde, who was the master politician, pulling strings and making connections behind the scenes to help pave the way for her husband to rise in the ranks of the Democratic Party. She was famous for her generosity of spirit and her thoughtfulness. Carrie visited the sick in hospitals and at their homes. She bought presents for children. She helped families in financial hardship get food and medicine. And she was especially fond of sending decorated sponge cakes for no reason at all to her friends. It was these acts of kindness that helped build loyalty among New Mexican voters. Carrie was a combination of a soft heart matched with a sharp political mind. She ensured the political success of her husband by canvassing neighborhoods working long days at campaign headquarters, registering voters, even setting up transportation to get voters to the polls on election day. I think the cakes probably didn't hurt either. At precinct meetings, Carrie ran the show. Friends of the Tingleys recalled that it was Carrie alone who had veto power over Clyde. If she said no, Clyde listened. Her efforts paid off, and the voters catapulted Clyde Tingley to political heights, electing him to one public office or another for over 40 years. Carrie might have been satisfied to let Clyde get the glory, but it was she who was creating the plan. Her political astuteness was not a secret. At least one politician claimed that he would never run against Clyde Tingley because, quote, all of Carrie's friends would vote for Clyde, and that would be the majority. End quote. It wasn't just the actions of Carrie Tingley that were memorable. She was unmistakable in a crowd. She had fiery red hair and an unmatched fashion sense, easily recognizable in her colorful wardrobe and over-the-top hats. She was often seen on Central Avenue walking toward the Sunshine Theater, where she saw a movie every afternoon. And then she walked to the Hilton Hotel to wait for Clyde to get off work. It was in the Hilton Hotel lobby where she would watch the political newcomers and veterans meet and greet each other, observing and possibly overhearing plans and ideas that she could share with Clyde or advise him to meet with certain people in town. The pinnacle of Clyde Tingley's political career was his tenure as New Mexico governor in the late 1930s. Clyde had a reputation as an argumentative and difficult man to work with. It was largely due to Carrie's relationship building, determination, and charity work that her husband remained a dominant figure in New Mexico politics. The voters loved the Tingleys. 
Clyde's specialty was developing relationships with celebrities, and he cultivated a friendship with New York Governor Franklin Delano Roosevelt, which proved to be a crucial move for New Mexico when the Tingleys became first family of New Mexico while FDR was serving as the United States president. Can you imagine two of the most politically savvy women of their era, Eleanor Roosevelt and Carrie Tingley, chatting about strategies for their husband's political careers? I don't know if that actually happened, but it's interesting to imagine. What I do know is that despite Carrie's affluent upbringing, she was not one for society life. She played hostess and ensured the comfort of her guests and attended all the events that were required as wife of a leading politician. But she preferred reading magazines, painting, watching movies, and taking her dogs for walks or rides in the car. A truly devoted pet owner, Carrie Tingley loved her dogs and was photographed with them nearly as often as she was with Clyde. She also had a pet parrot, who was not at all reluctant to entertain when the occasion arose. Visitors to the governor's mansion would be delighted as the parrot talked to them and performed somersaults. During her time as First Lady of New Mexico, Carrie Tingley set into motion a plan that she and Clyde held very dear. Leaning on their connection to President Roosevelt, they worked to persuade Roosevelt to assist in the building of a hospital for children. FDR not only promised to fund the hospital, but he provided the project with the architect who had designed the hospital that he visited for treatment of his polio in Warm Springs, Georgia. In 1937, the hospital opened in Hot Springs, New Mexico, now called Truth or Consequences. The people of Hot Springs voted to name the hospital after Carrie. But it was not only Carrie's hospital in name, she put her heart into her work with the children. She became the board secretary and would routinely take trips to visit the children. The Tingleys had no children of their own, but spent many days in Hot Springs helping with the hospital and especially loved spending the holidays there. One Easter, Carrie took along a thousand eggs to hide around the grounds of the hospital. For those who couldn't participate in the giant egg hunt, she went through the wards like the Easter Bunny, handing out eggs to the children. After overcoming illness herself, she was attuned to the need to raise the spirits of patients in a hospital. Her work with the hospital became one of the cornerstones of her life. After leaving Santa Fe, the Tingleys returned to Albuquerque. Clyde continued to serve in public office at the local level, while Carrie's involvement with the hospital ramped up. Throughout their lives, the couple remained devoted to one another. With Clyde's ambitious and outgoing nature, if a bit rough around the edges, and Carrie's generous heart matched with her ambition and attention to detail, they were always going to be a good team. But throw in money, time to spare, and devotion to one another, you get one truly powerful couple. Clyde passed away on Christmas Eve of 1960, and Carrie Tingley died less than a year later, on November 7, 1961, at the age of 84. The loss of Carrie Tingley was felt keenly throughout the state. The hospital moved to Albuquerque in the 1980s, and Carrie's charitable nature lives on through Carrie Tingley Hospital's foundation, which supports families who need assistance in medical care, provides a wide variety of adaptive recreational programming, and funds medical research into treatments and cures for illnesses affecting children. Thank you for joining us for Picture This with the Albuquerque Museum. Please join us next time for the story behind another photograph in the museum's collection.